The beautiful, unfinished obelisk is one of Aswan's most memorable monoliths. It is without a doubt the biggest obelisk ever built, although it was never finished. It provides an opportunity to learn more about how such gigantic temples were built in ancient Egypt under Hatshepsut's new empire. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel! To get interesting knowledge relating to ancient finds, make sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Today we are talking about the mystery of unfinished obelisk in Aswan, Egypt. So without further delay, let's jump into the video. There are many ancient stone quarries around the upper Egyptian city of Aswan, which were the source of ancient Egypt's finest granite. The unfinished obelisk may be seen near Aswan's northern quarries. The unfinished obelisk is a 40 meter long granite block that weighs more than 1,090 tons. It was abandoned thousands of years ago in the quarries of northern Aswan, ancient Egypt. It is one of the world's most important archaeological mysteries. Now, let's take a look into the history of this obelisk. Hatshepsut, who ruled between 1508 to 1458 BC, the fifth pharaoh of Egypt's 18th dynasty, ordered the obelisk's construction. The obelisk's origins are unknown, but it is thought that it was begun to complement what would later be known as the Lateran Obelisk, which was originally built in Karnak and later sent to the Lateran Palace in Rome. The fact that the unfinished obelisk is a third larger than other ancient Egyptian obelisks created throughout history is one of the most perplexing aspects for experts. If completed, it is expected to measure more than 40 meters in length and weigh over 1,090 tons. For reference, picture the weight of 200 African elephants. The obelisk's constructors are thought to have begun by excavating it straight from a rock, but during the process, they discovered fissures in the granite. This truth would have been the primary cause for abandoning the project. But the obelisk's bottom half is still cemented to the rock today. A lot of other shocking discoveries were also made. Although the project has not been completed, this obelisk is significant in terms of archaeological and historical research into ancient Egyptian stonework methods. During the inquiry, experts uncovered tool traces left by the employees, which had survived hundreds of years. They also discovered ochre-colored lines denoting the employees' whereabouts. In 2005, another unexpected find was found in the Aswan quarries. The researchers discovered an incomplete and partially worked obelisk base at the time. In addition, scientists discovered stone sculptures that might be related to the location where additional obelisks were built. All of these findings are currently on exhibit in an Egyptian government-run open-air museum, which is also an archaeological and heritage site. If you are enjoying the video so far, then don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's take a look at the construction of this obelisk. The obelisk's current site is regarded as an open-air museum. The obelisk can give us information about the tools that were used to build this gigantic monument, such as dolerite, a little ball composed of a mineral that is tougher than granite and was used to cut the obelisk out of. They also employed a variety of innovative construction techniques to spread the obelisk from the bedrock, such as creating small holes in the granite and filling those openings with wood chips. Water was absorbed into the chips and the soaking caused the obelisk to swell, forcing it to be separate from the foundation. This colossal obelisk exemplifies how these monuments were constructed out of the granite massif. Workers abandoned it without extracting it from the ground, most likely due to a flaw in the granite. The status of the enormous lateral grooves indicates that the rock was assaulted by percussion, rather than the Roman technique of notches and water-swollen wooden wedges, or even metal wedges, in ancient times. The surface of a uniform, crack-free, rocky bench was smoothed by putting hot bricks that were then cooled quickly with water. The granite was then repeatedly hammered with dolerite balls, many of which were discovered naturally formed in the desert valleys east and west of the river. These balls are typically 5 kilograms in weight and 15 to 30 centimeters in circumference. These lithic tools were employed by methodically repeating vertical percussion, rising and releasing them suddenly like a lady or a goose toll. 
As a result, strange tool markings arise in the shape of huge, circular grooves that look to have been nibbled. Ancient Egyptian obelisks are a hot topic of discussion since they pose a lot of issues that we still don't know the answers to. How did they manage to slice them all into one solid block? What method did they use to move them hundreds of kilometers away? What method did they use to lift the massive, hefty columns? Well, there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. What do you think about these? Let us know in the comments section. Many hypotheses suggest that the obelisks were brought by boats on the Nile River, yet it's impossible to explain how the granite masses got to the boats or how the boats could sustain such a load. It was normal practice to carve monuments straight into the bedrock, and masons used stone balls to smooth out any faults until the surface was smooth. In Aswan, there are still examples of these dolerite balls that were tougher than granite and did not fracture or break despite repeatedly striking the granite surface. It would have been the world's biggest piece of stone ever carved by man. Let's discuss the significance of obelisks. In most cases, obelisks were placed in front of temples. In Egyptian temples, this was distinct. Since the Middle Ages, temples have been regarded as noteworthy constructions throughout most of Rome and Egypt. Now, this obelisk is a tourist attraction. Visitors are now welcome to go up massive wooden ramps and stairs to the unfinished obelisk. The quarry has been divided into many levels for tourists to use as observation platforms. It's like an open-air museum that retraces the ancient past's path. The rock for the obelisk came from Aswan's southern outskirts. Historians currently refer to this massive obelisk as the Lateran Obelisk. The Supreme Council of Antiquities identified the 2.5 meter deep pit where the majestic but toppled obelisk lay. The canal connected the quarry to the Nile River, they discovered. The obelisk's base was not even released from the bedrock. The unfinished obelisk is proof of a massive undertaking that had the potential to become yet another gigantic building. The rock resting in unglorified dejection is worth a visit, even if there isn't much to see. Be cautious during the peak summer season and carry a water bottle and apply sunblock. Also, remember to bring your headwear. Well, this brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you loved it and it probably increased your knowledge regarding the mysterious obelisk. For more videos like this, you can visit the channel. Also, don't be afraid to give suggestions in the comment section regarding any future videos you want to see.